This is Twit. We have another instance of Russian protest that has appeared in JavaScript's open source repository on March 17th. So today's the 12th, almost a month ago. The Russia-based developer Viktor Mukachev, who's also known as Yoffel, and since that's much easier, we'll call him Yoffel, uh, altered his popular NPM library known as Event Source Polyfill. This change, which was introduced into version 1.0.26 of Event Source Polyfill, will cause web applications built with this now latest version of the library, and it's still current, by the way. Nearly a month later, this is still in place. It will cause web applications built with, the, with this update to display anti-war messages protesting the, quote, unreasonable invasion, unquote, of Ukraine to Russia-based users 15 seconds after a web page which incorporates this code is displayed. Okay, now polyfill packages, uh, we might also call them backfill packages, but polyfill is their, their official name, implement sets of newer JavaScript features on web browsers that do not yet support them. In this case, the event source polyfill package that's been deliberately polluted by its developer implements the very useful JavaScript event source API. This API allows a web page to open a persistent connection back to an HTTP server, which then sends events to the browser. And the, it's a one-way connection, which remains open until it's explicitly closed by calling event source dot close function. So what's interesting is why anyone would need to backfill this particular API, since it's been present in all major browsers for quite a while. It was first adopted by Chrome and Firefox, get this, in their respective version sixes. I Whoa. didn't even, yeah. <laughs> We're up to 100 six. now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. Firefox is at 98 and Chrome is at 100. But the, what's interesting, Leo, is the chart showing the API's adoption profile had a single interesting and glaring exception, Internet Explorer. <laughs> and it is probably the case that Russia remains the surviving bastion of Internet Explorer use. Oh, isn't that so, funny? And by the, oh, my God. And by the way, Leo, if you didn't see Colbert... Last night, oh goodness, he had something. He, they resubtitled uh, Putin talking to the camera. Oh, that'll be fun! It was. I it was. That. It was quite good. <laughs> he was trying to raise money for uh, <laughs> Russia and was, for example, offering a bo a a box puzzle of, and he said with only four pieces missing, and oh. And that's just a tip of the iceberg. It's, oh. you know, Colbert at it and his writers at their finest. So anyway, um, in order for Russia's inventory of IE to be able to run web applications that rely upon the event source API, that support needs to be polyfilled, provided by this library. But given how pervasive the use of Yoffel's event source polyfill package is. And given that it's only needed by IE, since all other browsers have incorporated the API, the API natively for years. I mean, I, I didn't go back to figure out when version 6 of Firefox and Chrome were, but I mean, it is a while ago. Um, it must mostly be due to other developers not having yet proactively removed it from their own package dependencies. Because get this, it is currently used by more than 135,000 GitHub repositories. 
135,000 wow. wow. individual repositories. And it's being downloaded more than 600,000 times every week on NPM for incorporation into those other packages whenever they're rebuilt. <clears throat> now, of course, the bigger concern here is that, you know, it's the use of what should be a rigorously politically neutral software API being repurposed to inject its author's political sentiment, you know, whether or not we agree with it, I happen to, but still, you know, into the use of their software package. The users, and, and think about this, the users who receive this sudden anti-war protest pop-up have no idea where it's coming from. They don't know that it was buried in some inter-package API dependency and that it wasn't put up and reflective of the website or web app they're using. In, in fact, since everything else they see is coming from the website or web app they're using, that's exactly what they're going to think. So it really seems wrong. It's the abuse of the implicit trust by the developers who have chosen to use and depend upon this package that's the problem. And over time, with repeated incidents like this, this is the third one recently, you know, that we know of, that like deliberate alteration of the package for this purpose, the abuse of this trust is going to weaken the entire ecosystem. And maybe that's not, in a way, such a bad outcome. Perhaps it should be weakened. That is, perhaps we need to revisit all of this. The very fact that a package's author and maintainer was able to cause their package to behave in a way that its dependent users may well disapprove of should serve as further demonstration of just how rickety, from a security standpoint, this entire package repository, you know, dependency tree ecosystem has become. In the case of NPM and the browsers that run this code, they're going to start needing to not trust the code that's being sourced by the same origin server. Not just sequester non-same origin code or non-same origin code, but you know the, the stuff coming from the origin server. And if that has to happen, that's a game changer. And of course, NPM is only one, uh, one instance from the world of open source public repository supply chains. There are many more. You know, Maven, Java's uh, similar uh, supply chain has, you know, it is equally prone. So what we've built is not robust in the face of an active adversary. And unfortunately, our adversaries are becoming more active. <clears throat>